Okay, so before we, we have uh, our ADB, the sign lecture series two, this is the second part. The first part was quite successful. It was attended by at least probably 40% additional students outside the ADB uh, lecture. But of course, the lecture series, uh, the priority is the semester six graduating cohort. Okay, so for today, we will be having uh, a three-part um, session. Okay, the first part, as I mentioned, will be lecture one, uh, part of ADP lecture series two. Okay, to be follow up, followed by a project one a feedback session and a project one b briefing. Okay, so I hope you are all uh, all feeling well. Okay, and ready for today's lecture. Okay, so we will be having eight guest speaker together with one technical expert, which is KSM at Phoenix. Okay, they will be uh, raising our lecture series also okay, on the technical aspect. But uh, our first lecturer, uh, I'm sure you're quite familiar with him. He was part of Art Taylor's academic team. Okay, Architection is a practicing architect uh, with lecturing experience, both in Taylor's University and UTAR. Okay. An award winning from the Sala Nationals Design Residence in 2019, British Council's Alumni in 2020, and RTF's PJ Top 45 Architects. Shen enjoys writing uh, to document observations, consolidate ideas, and propose design solution for existing and newfound problems in the living environment. Shen leads Fay Architects, an architecture practice that develops the solution and meaningful design to the needs of operation and the client. Okay, uh, he will be doing a lecture on uh, which revolves around uh, complexity of urban space, which is becoming evident. Um, we, we develop our study in types and typology, in typo typology. The study by segmenting in types allows comparison in space and to study their origins and evolution in hopes to develop a design strategy in meeting the rele its relevance. Uh, by doing so, uh, Shen believes that it would allow certain building types to subvert, integrate, intensify, or intervene the existing forces of the site. These four ideas from the cover page design of this lecture, okay, the four diagrams, which we are representing the four ideas of the building types. So without further delay, uh, I would like to introduce our speaker for today, architect Shen Fei. Hi, thank you, Prince, for inviting, as well as Miss Tay for arranging uh, this session, uh, the first session for Studio 6. Um, I'm very happy to share with you today um, some of the insights and methods to, to conduct your context studies, uh, as this is part of your first, um, one of your first tasks in your project development. Um, now, I also will not be able to see your face, so do feel free to interrupt because then uh, I'm trying to make this more like a dialogue rather than uh, lectures. So I was also recognize some of the uh, names here in the group. So do interrupt me if something is unclear or the internet is not well or you have any questions. So now the first thing, here is context in architecture. Um, this is almost a collection of my years of teaching, so five years in, in Taylor's and in Utah, that allows me to come up with certain methods that I think will benefit the students. So this, is, this sharing is a bit out of the book. And so try to understand it as much. And with better understandings, your methods of analyzing would not be uh, so boring, uh, will not be so literal. So 
setting context by types. For me, types, it's, it's very important. Uh, if you look into some of the websites from some of the big international practice uh, in, in the international realms, you'll probably get to find projects that would distinguish themselves from project, different way of projects. So for this, Roger Stakes Harvest, uh, they would differentiate themselves through the programs, the functions of the buildings. If, if you're seeing my screen well. Now, this is Fossil and Partners, one of the biggest practice in the world. Uh, you can see they were distinguishing by skill, you know, whether this is a form of master plans, whether it's a form of furnitures, lighting designs, uh, or refurbishments of uh, theaters. So that gives you an understanding of differentiations of projects of, of uh, analyzing by types. Now, BRK Angels and BIG um, differentiate projects rather differently. You know, one would see it being broken down into more of a, uh, by yearly basis or by alphabetical orders, by programs. So there's the color coded differently. Uh, by the scale as well, from the extremely large to the really small like, car designs, or even to the status of the projects, whether it's completed under constructions, uh, as well as locations. So, so that helps us to understand things a bit better, which I will show examples later. So, so basically, this gives you a better insight of what whether most of the project is European based or whether it's Asian based or American based. So you can see New York here is one of their main major project sites. Now, students can also go to other universities as well to, to really understand what, what genre of, of design they fall under. And this is very important for Taylor students as they were going into masters, whether they're going for masters in Taylor's or masters in other universities. Now they then get to actually compare and for example, the one from the AA school, then they were broken down into different classrooms that focuses on different topics of different interests. So now coming back to our slides here, um, would, would those analysis will be compared by, by means of form, by means of various methods of circulation, circulation. by users, by materials, vernaculars, by the height of the buildings, by the length of the streets, or by programs. So this is where the students have to make a decision, where traditionally students would be doing analysis based on their seniors' work. You know, for example, if the seniors have done this, I will do this. Well, this is an easy way of, of analyzing, but I would encourage students to be more critical in, in understanding what they're doing rather than just following. Um, one also could not fully criticize following is a bad thing, but I think the process of teaching the students to, to get you to become better is for you to think why you're doing certain things. So now I'm trying to show you something. It's also part of following as well, but hopefully it opens up your mind to, to things and questions your work, questions with your tutors. Is this necessary? Is this the right thing to do? Am I going on the right track? So that's where your tutor comes to, to, to very good use. Now, what I'm trying to share here is the uh, study of context by types. In this case, is from a very big scale to a very small scale. To give you a very example of understanding types by varieties of different uh, analysis, it's not just analyzing one. Now, the urban layout, very interestingly, for example, this image, um, can any students, Tell me where is this? Okay. Well, I'll I'll give it a food for thoughts for for everyone who are thinking in quiet, in silence. Now this is in Rome. Well, of course, you can tell this by the plaza they developed as well as the uh, internal courtyards that were developed uh, as part of the development. So. With that, that kind of lifestyles, urban planning affects the design of houses, design of uh, living spaces. 
This is in France, if you can recognize the monuments, they were cut through almost like a star because they wanted a direct view from the monuments from most of the parts of the buildings. So that's where, from this you can tell that certain view has to be open from monuments to the palace perhaps or someone's house in the ends. So that creates a very different types of design looking into triangulations of house of, of architectures or junctions that created suddenly. Now this is in uh, New York where which is a more modern uh, developments where greater developments of buildings based on one acre size and this allows regular developments but also very controlled way of, of master plannings. Now this is of course in Malaysia, this, I'm showing this, this is based in Klang, which is a very organic development of, based on the, the, the layout of the shop houses. This it will develop based on about 20 feet or 25 feet by 100 feet, 150 feet in the olden days. So, so again, that generates a different language and thus creates a different types of analysis. From the big extra large urban layout to the spatial layout that one could see in the internal layout of uh, buildings, which is in this case, I consider this as tangible. Uh, whether you know the internal layout of the buildings, whether it's a form of entryways, whether it's a form of um, atriums within the building, like somewhere pyramids, um, or you know PLCCs where they have three courtyards at each end, so that generates a different use of the space as well. So this is one of the students' work where they look into shopping malls as a form of attractions, streetscapes. It's a smaller scale than big buildings, where again, this look into how different buildings interact with the streets they work with, they're connected with, whether it's friendly to, uh, to uh, passerbys or whether it's more friendly to cyclists, or how is the interactions between the building and the, uh, the walkway. So this becomes an important way of not just understanding the context, but really distinguish it by skill and understand it in the very various ways as well. Which I'll, I'll guide you later how to this work on, uh, on, on applying this, uh, this, this uh, analysis. Now, facades also plays a major role, whether it's very uh, full glaze systems, which has no interactions with the, uh, the neighbors, or, or something that's very engaging with windows and people hanging out or people get to see from from the outside. So this is also one of the potentials that you can look into. Um, well, some of the students look into intangible space, spaces that were mostly disused and looking at opportunities of how certain disuse were being formed and being used later. A visual connections, again, is important because as you, what's, your, what's this, uh, this term site located at? Uh, Prince? Can I mention Chowkit? Uh, the three sites are Chowkit. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. Uh, Chowkit is also interesting because then, then you have a lot of corners, you have a lot of back lanes, side lanes, and it's also a historically rich uh, neighborhood. Uh. So then you're not just looking at the modern things, but you're also looking into the traditional ways uh, of, of buildings. So for example, some of the uh, homeless, you probably can see a lot over the areas or junctions between the uh, side lane and the, uh, and the main streets or potentially buskers around the areas. Um, now, some of the students then went into a smaller scales of the intangibles as to see how potentially some of the flexible, uh, in, you know, um, Expanded space can be made, such as the alfresco dinings that's widely seen uh, during lunchtime and after work. So this is where then spaces can be expanded or contracted. And this is really understanding what you're dealing with rather than enforcing your, your, your uh, opinion into the, uh, the space. Now, this is a leisure 
uh, leisure in the form of potentially looking into Starbucks coffee, how, how Starbucks has been doing so well in Taylor's, but not other shops. So this is also an analysis and understanding, is this the brand or is this the architecture that's affecting, or is this the, the environment that affects the uh, use of the space? So this is, these students actually look into different varieties of leisures inside a shopping malls. Um, they are considered intangible because they're temporary and thus understanding whether performance space or window shopping as a form of attractions or that food courts using the smells as a form of attractions or performance as a form of attraction. So these are then becoming important part of the design and understanding what you are dealing with on the site. Now, this is important because you know, back in the uh, 18th centuries, this uh, Quartmeyer de Quincy, it's a French uh, architectural theorist, who says that, well, this type is also good, but over-reliance over the precedents lead to re repetitions and, and imitations of, that rules out originalities and inventions. Well, what he's trying to say is then that if you are just copying it directly, then it, and the, the work itself would be, would be lack of originality so, and in, in its inventions. So the key is then to think in types, to really just not just observe and record and show as a report, but to think and analyze in types that allows architects to reach the essence of the elements in these studies. Now, this is one of the guidelines um, to, to really start to look into designing uh, from the context. First, I think you will have to go to the site and really understand it, not just through Google Street, uh, to really understand how people behave, how the street activities during the day, during the night, uh, during festive seasons. Um, this is inspections. Then you come up with your own analysis to tabulate this massive amount of data. And sometimes they could be conflicting. Uh, that maybe gives you a different understandings and thus better verdict that forms the brief and the agenda that you ought to discuss with your tutors. Uh, so with these verdicts, you come up with a strategies. How do we address certain issues? Once you have understand it, then you develop ideas, you develop maybe experiments, working closely with your tutors to, to find out what is possible as a draft, as a sketch, and later then this is where the design comes in to amalgamate this as the solutions in the form of space layout, in the form of the drawings. And of course, most importantly, lastly, is to represent your classmates, present your tutors, your juries, to, to see whether it makes sense. And this is, again, what I see, and this is, especially Studio 6, is very relevant uh, before you get to move to masters where you will be being questions more, you, you being have to being asked to be more critical, um, almost to this 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 um, this uh, flow of design up stage. Now, I summarize some of the ideas of the four types of strategies that address this complexities, urban complexities. Um, that is very different from many other city developments. So. They're very strongly related to the site itself. They sometimes could be, even though very alien to the site or even unfriendly to the sites, but they are relevant just the same. Um, and and students nowadays have to address quite a different things. If your site is in Chowkit, then you will face complexities in the form of historical, the local communities, as well as capitalist development, ownerships, that would that are driven by economic uh, advancements. So this is where architects, as you as a student, they come in in this discourse to, to, to take considerations of the communities and the social context as a whole. Because in the end, you're developing, you're designing for the people, um, whether it's the people in the form of clients, communities, or governments, that you're able to address this social sustainabilities as well as the economical uh, needs. So conditions and teams that frame the, uh, the studio works are, are at least outlined by prints in the unit brief. Lah. So maybe I'll give you a bit of ideas what I categorize this into four categories that students can take onto their, their work. Now, 
The strategies that can be developed, for example, could be in the form of subversions. Now, subversions could, could actually mean uh, turning the cultures onto itself and thus transforming into new types. So this is where you would try to, in a sense, you know, subvert and, and overturn the existing cultures and provide a better solutions that maybe some of them have not considered before. Now, this is also, to do this, you need to understand the context very well. And this topic of today's uh, lectures. Now, integrations is possibly bringing into the differences of the sites into one and thus creating hybrids of differences. So you're not just combining such different communities together, but you are finding ways how they can work together using architectures, right? So you, I, 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 I previously have seen students work where they just put design a building and say, oh, this is a gallery that, that will showcase work that it will benefit both parties. But it doesn't work like that so literally because you really need to understand how they behave and, and that they will integrate and that strategy could work better rather than just literally just putting them together, different social group into one building. Now, intensifications is the one that would cultivate, emphasize and escalate the existing types. So perhaps you say that certain cultures, certain phenomena at the sites needs intensifications and thus you wish to actually, you know, make it more obvious, make it more active to celebrate these activities better. Um, number four is interventions, where it questions the role of existing types and interrupts the site status quo. So this is where then, again, you want to change things on the site, it's about something is, 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 is not right, but you want to not just change it directly, but you, you want to really understand and questions what each of them are doing and, and see how to work with the existing context. Now, I've um, covered 25% of my slides. Is there anything, any questions, any doubt uh, from the students before I continue more on the topics? At the moment, it's fine. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. Right, so now let's look into the analyzing tools. Now, we, before we even start to analyze, you know, we, I kind of take a look back into, into the postmodernist periods of architectures and see how previously architects analyze uh, context and using these tools to develop. So there was one, uh, around 1973, 1972-1973s, a famous book, Learning from Las Vegas. This is about 45, 45 years ago. And this actually plays a role in postmodernist developments in, in mostly Western countries. So, now what this means is Robert Venturi, you can see here. Um, he started to look into Las Vegas and see the signages. As you know, if you've been to Gunting, similarly, you'll be attracted by multitudes of uh, signages. And so for him, he used sketches, he used photographies to record down the different elements. So those were, those were the time where photographies are used and, and perhaps some uh, watercolors or even sketches to really understand how signages plays a role in, in the architectures in Las Vegas. So even though they are very literal, but the, the motifs are very clear. You can see the understandings of symbol some of them are using signages but some of them the symbol becomes the signage becomes the building this is where this diagram comes into the, uh, the, 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 the showing where you know the audience would you see the building as uh, as a signage or would you want to have the signage differentiated from the building so this is where you know people start to question would you want to go for this dark, dark building dark sheds or a decorative shed or a building that's separated from the, uh, the building. So this is where McDonald comes into place. Um, petrol stations are, are using these methods, but you know, some buildings are postmodernist buildings tend to show like this. You know, an architect, you know, some of the Malaysian architects are, are using this method as well, the twin towers, which is based on the um, 
the motif of the, uh, the Islamic symbols that we develop as the, the building. So that is almost then saying that the building is developed based on the understanding of the Islamic patterns. Uh, we also have other buildings that mimics the inverted uh, kampung houses uh, because of a certain principles. So this is where we slowly understand why buildings are being built differently. Next, we have a, a stage where we're moving more into the diagrams in 1995, um, where most likely uh, done by Ram Kruhas in, in most prominently shown is SML Excel, which is a very thick book. And most of his works are then developed based on diagrams. So diagrams were then made into understanding of a strip, you know, horizontal strips that have perforations into the, the park that was developed into ideas of circulations and, and large buildings. So this all becoming diagrams that, that eventually becomes something more interesting, uh, I'll show you later. Now, this is where the diagrams becomes a tools of designs um, in the form of programs here in the Seattle libraries, where you can see programs are being understood as a space and how they work with each others. So of course, this is the, the end result of the building where from, from this sections, whilst it might be very simple to, to look into it, but I think the, the thinking process is then allowed certain connections and certain privacies to be developed in the year 1995. But even considering how certain spaces can be reprogrammed, you know, as well, I mentioned interventions or even subversions using programs to differentiate people, differentiate group of different activities. And this interesting activity starts to, to, to generate, not just um, talking about public and private, but talking about how certain use of space are being more accentuated, more intensified, or some are being suppressed. So this is something that students can start to look into to, to even back in 1995, you know, some of the ideas were, were already done so using programs. Now, even combining it, understanding that different library has different categories and understanding that you know, books actually requires 32%, but the other areas are actually not book driven. So then how do we split this book into different areas? How do we work very well with living rooms and spiral around circulation areas and reading rooms being separated? So basically reshuffling the programs up. and this eventually come up with an idea uh, like this, even though it's, it's, um, it's very complex to go through it, um, but there were strategies to, to really break into programs to intensify or encourage certain activities within these buildings. Now in 2009, um, comics were, were being used as a form of narrative to drive the design, to drive the uh, the, uh, the project's idea. Um, also for this uh, architect, Biyake Injo, uh, yes, it's more, uh, where uh, comics were being developed uh, as a means of explaining how uh, the projects. Um, now, this has never been attempted in uh, tailors, not, not to my knowledge, but I think students can actually work again very closely with your tutors to, to generate ideas using comics um, to, to really see how far this can really go to, to almost a fictional projects by itself, but have to really address the site uh, context. Now, 3D diagram, it starts to be developed after the, uh, um, in the last few decades. Um, well, in this case, having understood how, you know, the, the circulations, the, the idea of privacies and views are being focused, so the idea is then that libraries, of course, the best is arranged in a straight way, but no harm developing in the circular. And subsequently, having looked into public spaces, how do we internalize and externalize public spaces? Now that generates a combination of different spaces that will then spiral around. So having developed a strategy, this is how then we develop your, your building in the latest so this strongly on the privacies as well as the views of the buildings it eventually becomes an exercise for uh, environmental sun um, sunlight uh, analysis to control the facade design now 
in 2018, this is where I was teaching one of the studio. Um, I get to realize students tend to do a lot of this literal analysis using photography maps as a means to, to kind of encapsulate the urban complexities. So this complexities, no harm, it, it, it works to a certain extent. But I soon realized that the tools were incomplete pictures of and the, the ideas they portray. You know, having a photograph, having a floor plan, having diagrams, I think that, that works in a certain way, but it does not help you to develop further. You know, some of the students, again, uh, develop literal photography analysis, but those analysis in most of my teaching before have not directly helped the students to, to develop their ideas well. There's no correlations. So this is where I encourage uh, some of the students to use a different way of capturing this context, which I call this uh, urban context. Now, because the urban complexities is not just about talking on old building facade, traditional, but it's also capturing a rather unconventional observations. In this way, and one of the students conducted day and night, the youth and the senior, because the topic he, he wants to address is actually how to, com how to consolidate the youth and the senior into this site. So he realized that during the day, the senior actually hang out at the, at the veranda, but during the night, the kids kind of, the, the youth actually go out and do drinking and socialize. So for this, then he starts to actually compare what common grounds that these two different populations can share. So he conducted day and night, youth and senior, as you can see the colors of the people. So through this, then you can actually tell the difference and get to understand the, the, the observations recorded would then be helping the development of your uh, architecture later. Um, I think we reached about 50%. Uh, any questions so far before I continue? Or any students want a toilet break? Okay, if none, I shall continue. Now, this, the next example here shows the, the different scale of the spaces that the person has to go through during the day and during the night. So some of the people would have to be, some of the users on the sites will be going around the circulation areas of the Pasamana. Some will be in the, um, the dining of the cafes. Some will be working in the building. So this basically addresses the different scale of the buildings they, they used to hang out with um, and where they actually interact while they're working or while they're in Basamalams. So there's this four different lifestyles in four different uh, districts that the students intend to make it uh, as a melting pot for the students to mingle. Um, well, this is basically another way of students developing the journeys of the, 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 the users. So this is starting from the apartment, going to the workplace, you know, this is potentially, you know, they, they are working in the building and then they're going out for lunch. So this is basically understanding where they are doing the, the, the eating, doing where they work, doing where they sleep and where they play. So this basically understanding, generally humans are, are lying into this four, four, four lifestyles of uh, eat, sleep, work, play. So then this students then trying to capture where they are and wh what is the architecture that, that encapsulate these activities. Um, next, this is also something similar where the lifestyle of four different periods, trying to understand here. Uh, this this um, back in the days, so how people used to work in the shop off shop house, uh, above the shop house, then eventually in the office block and eventually in the bigger office blocks. So he's trying to then look into um, different in the different time zones, maybe from 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, how differently people work in this, in this space. Because maybe he's addressing uh, historical factors, 
he's trying to bring back the past to the present. So this is then allowed him to understand how people in the past has worked and how they, they work. So this is then showing it in, in a form of drawings. And this is important because architects shows ideas using drawings. Now, even back in the 1700s, in the Noni plans as well, um, the use of Noni plans developed by this, uh, this, this artist called uh, John Battista Noni, which is that's why called the Noni plans in 1748, which is um, which, you know, developing a way on the ground floor to understand why is the public space and where is the inaccessible space. And for those who have been to uh, Italy, we we'll get to see that most of their public buildings are open to, to, to the mass. So whether it's a form of church or whether it's a form of social, um, social uh, space, gathering space or plaza here, you can see. So that, that is interestingly developing where is the open space and where is the closed space. So that starts to see the city differently, not just as a form of building, but into accessible space and non-accessible space. So this is more helpful again, uh, especially the urban spaces has been growing, not just horizontally, but also vertically as well. So one of them used this to actually analyze, um, the ex using exonometric to analyze the, uh, ho not just horizontal, but the vertical complexities of the urban that we live now. So um, I'm suggesting certain tools for you to start to look into how to analyze your context. And with that, then your, your, your strategies, your ideas will become better because you are starting on the good ground. Uh, some of the students even break further looking into to workspace, looking into transparency, some of the pockets of space, how people walk throughout. So this is not just a drawing exercise, but using drawings as a means to analyze. Now, this is then very important because as you were developing all these ideas, then you start to question, is this trying to address the need of the client um, or the needs of the potatoes, the inhabitants, or you're trying to address the problem as a whole, the communities? Because as the urban space is becoming more complex, we need to look into multiple parts of the users to really address not just one communities, but multiple level. So this is one of the ways to then slowly, um, as the kind of complexities of the community starts to grow, we start to develop our studies in types and thus the matrix form comes in in the form of uh, typological. So the, the studies then segment the types and allows the comparisons of spaces, whether it's form of their origins or the evolutions, in hopes to develop a design strategies uh, that meets the relevance. And this is where you need to work very closely with your tutor again. And by doing so, I believe would allow certain building types, new building types to be, to be subverted intensifies or intervene of the existing context of the sites. So that's, that kind of explains the, um, the, the, um, the cover that you see in the first page of the presentations. So eventually the outcome of the project is then that, for example, these students actually look into how the noises, the music that generates from the inside of the building affects the outside of the buildings. So whether the form of facades try to play in, 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 in the, uh, in the uh, outcome of the sound transmissions from the outside and the inside. So then the whole building, not just becoming uh, a space to put programs, but this drawings eventually shows the interactions from the inside, the multiple levels down to the outside of the buildings. So using a facade as a form of masking of the interiors and the exteriors. So this is also where, you know, the facades really understanding um, the different facades that you found on the site. Some are big, some are small, some are really for workspace, some are really for residential purposes and, and the activities that's happening inside the buildings. 
whether it's a form of large performance or small performance. Because again, by doing this, you're not just addressing a single user groups, but you're address addressing multiple. So by breaking this, you then allow this as an opportunity to integrate multiple user group, perhaps, or even different complexities of user groups. Now, this students then look into the streetscapes as a form of connections. So with that, having understood how the street works, see, maybe from informal market, um, markets, uh, a bit like Mabasa Malams, or even certain activities that happens in the uh, cycling, or even some activities that happen inside the shops, a bit like um, a bit like uh, shopping centers, uh, down into the uh, the street markets. So having understood this, then the student used the streets and the different way of streets are being designed to kind of integrate into his building, whether it's form of overlapping it, of going up and down, or underlap overlapping by 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 by, by the layers of spaces. So eventually that becomes the kind of uh, streets above the buildings. Um, so I understand there's a tendency for students to just look into students' work and say, oh, this is what I'm going to do. But this is where the, the juries might come back and say your project has, you know, is, is being disconnected from your context, from what you study and why you come up with certain things. Then we can easily know that the students most likely copy someone else's work just from the look of the, uh, the perspective. So what I'm trying to show you here is then that you can see the core relationships of design from um, observations to strategies up until the final outcomes of the projects. So there's a certain core relationships, or attempts of core relationships as the students develop the ideas. Now, this is uh, students who use gallery space as a form of connections between the neighborhood. So how do you connect the neighborhood using gallery space? So now for these students, it's really understanding um, gallery as an arcade space. Then they look into how arcade space can be broken down, could be upstairs, downstairs, could be varieties of junctions created, or whether it's a big gallery or small gallery arcade spaces. Um, this is very similar to uh, Publica, if you've been to the shopping mall. So that Publica is just a straight um, retail space rather than having an atrium. So with that, that kind of generates possibilities from the studies of street activities into possibilities and subsequently breaking it down into, into opportunities of combinations that eventually working with the context of the sites, working with the building of the sites that develops you know, crazy forms that, that subverts or you know, changes the conventional way of arcade spaces. Now, eventually that, that turns out to be rather interesting forms. So, so this is where students doesn't just look into a perspective and say, I'm gonna do this as my project, but they use this and understand the context. And this is the purpose of today's lectures to see really understand the context and slowly develop your ideas after. And eventually this waving of the streets, waving of combinations of the streets to make a connections of the neighboring neighborhoods. Now, the other part, again, this is very similar to Kuala Lumpur. I think this was a project being proposed before the uh, buildings being erected and completed now. Um, so before that, the idea was that, you know, because of the economical restrictions of, of, of skyscrapers, it requires a lot of capital to build one building, to build a skyscrapers. So the students look into the economical terms of the uh, projects and look into potentially growing the building as, as, as a good time and bad time. So this was one of the projects and proposal for the Marina Bay, uh, Singapore, 2005. Um, so this is where they look into whether housing uh, uh, towers developments are being grown as a kind of straight buildings, but looking into ways of how building a different form of building, whether it's a form of residential offices uh, or, or public spaces can be grown into a building and eventually they are connected as a form of uh, bridge that goes along. So then, the development of the, the, the towers, the master plans can be grown according to the economical conditions. 
and, and eventually growing into different core, understanding how staircases works, lift, and um, that, that forms part of the buildings. You know, again, this is a study of how different skyscraper works. They eventually can be grown almost like a tree, different services are being developed, and eventually into a, a very interesting forms and, and that can change according to the economic, even change of political governments as, as it goes along. So eventually that's kind of outcome of the projects or even scenarios of the projects uh, looking into potentially, you know, Asian space in the middle, but eventually seal up from the base to the top. So what this means is then that as the economy of the country grows, the building becomes wider and bigger at the top and it becomes connected as it kind of grows along with age. So now coming to the end of the, the sharings today is then that what is your brief, you know? So you need to be clear and, and what are you trying to address on the site, whether it's the, uh, um, whether it's a controversial topic such as, you know, prostitutes on the sites or beggars, which is, you know, a real issue, homeless, or whether it's a form of um, economical issues, like how do people actually get job opportunities on sites, or whether it's the age issues where you want to integrate certain aging groups to one, or whether it's, um, you know, basically there's a lot of ideas to, to address. Now. So as you are now inspecting the sites in Chow Kids and you analyze it, this is where then you come up with potentially some ideas and hopefully you get the chance to be on the site to then able to understand the uh, issues at hand. Okay, so I hope you get to get a better insight or maybe more inspired by, by the sharing today. Um, or maybe give you a better clarity of what you could do, what you could be focusing on, um, and hopefully you have a great term ahead. I think this sharing is even more important because most of you will be working from home. And, and what I've noticed is that the, the students' work tend to lack substance and <laughs> intellectualities and depth or criticalities. Uh, and, and this sharing like this hopefully gives you a better idea on the methods, better understandings of the sites, and eventually gives you a better you know, strategies in that eventually. Because if you do not have, because um, if you do not have inspections, if you do not have analysis, we have no verdict, you definitely have no strategies, right? So, so this is important as a first step, second step, third step, you know, and subsequently. So hopefully you keep this in mind. Um, again, I'm, I hope to give a better understanding for you to develop your ideas. Um, we would like to welcome questions or any thoughts they have or anything that you want me to repeat because I don't get to see your face. So I, I'm just gonna keep speaking. Um, if not, maybe the, the, the any tutors would like to maybe give additional insights into... Yeah, thank you very much for the very detailed uh, and very relevant lecture for today, specifically on context and architecture. So probably we can open the floor, uh, I mean, open the time now for Q&A. Uh, probably would like to start with Ms. Tay. Okay. Thank you for the um, very detailed lecture, Shen. Um, it is great. Uh, I think it's very inspiring for the students, you know, most of the stuff that you're sharing. And today what I learned is the Nolly map. So I went online to check out on Mr. Nolly. Yeah, so it's interesting. I learned something from you. Um, I would like if you could, Jen, share with the student, if you were them, how would you start strategizing by narrative? Well, if, 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 uh, if I were I, then um, if I were a student, I would try to enjoy myself or even try to 
to pretend that I'm, I'm one of the frequent users of the site, to, to even video it, um, to even try to really understand. There are many ways of understanding the sites. Uh, one could from video, but most importantly, you need to be there to, to immerse yourself or put yourself in their shoes to really then understand what you're working with. Then you can understand them better. You know, I, I know now the MCO has discouraged you to, to do so, but well, I think having a mask, having you know, safety precautions helps. And that makes your projects having a good starting point to, to, to kickstart your ideas. If not, I would think students would rely on their previous years, their senior years to, to, to come up with ideas, which we have seen quite enough. Um, but if the students are serious with their work, and this is what you could do, you can even um, hide your camera in the back to, to really record down certain activities conducted at the site. Uh, of course, safety, safety is important. Uh, but that's where you work as a group. I think the students are can be going to the site as a group. Then some of them can stay there over the night, over the day. Um, of course, with the permissions of the school, there's a letter given by the school to, to allow students to go further, to really first understand. And that's hopefully that today's lecture helped you to show you that there's actually a lot more to investigate. Thank you, Shen. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's important. It's important to make students understand that their uh, in-depth understanding of the site is the beginning uh, of the project. Yeah, and I think I, I would usually get inspired by the students because tutors, we, we, we do not conduct the analysis, right? The students are the ones who conduct. So if they get to find out something interesting on the site, then then we get to listen to the student as well. This is where the student present and the, 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 the tutors listen, right? So I enjoy that where students take an extra steps. If students want to gain, gain brownie points from the, the tutors, and this is what I think it helps you to, to go further, to immerse yourself. And that's where we enjoy listening to you as well. Great, thank you. Thanks, uh, Beck, for the question. Wonderful hat also. Very cute hat that you're wearing. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks, Shen. Any question from, from my colleagues and from the students? By the way, you may uh, switch on your camera so architect Shen can see everyone. Uh, your your uh, good-looking and beautiful faces. Of course, uh, our speaker would love to see you at this virtually. So um, guys, I encourage you to switch on our cameras. Okay, any question from uh, my dear colleagues and from my dear students? I, okay, Prince, I, I had, really yeah, have I, questions, uh, but thanks, Shen, for sharing the, the great insight. I would prefer students to ask questions instead, because if you don't ask questions, uh, we wouldn't know or we couldn't gauge how far you actually understand the presentation or even the lecture. You need to ask questions. Don't mind whether your question is irrelevant or whether the question is good enough, doesn't matter. As long as you ask questions, like sometimes, you know, don't be shy, just, just ask any question that you have in mind, you know, all right? So don't be so quiet. We've got 106, uh, 100 over students. Uh, uh, at least we need one student to come out or even less than uh, five or 10 uh, out of you all to ask a question so that uh, our guest lecturers or our guest speakers would know uh, where you, you know to, to what level do you understand yeah ask questions students thank you okay, thanks Ed. thanks well we can jesse do you have any questions sorry to put you on the spotlight <laughs> okay we have a quest question for architect shen Jay, I don't have any question, but I really like the presentation. It really guides us like how we can look into our data in another way and how we can analyze it. So I think most of my friends, they also agree that looking in this manner, it actually convey a message better than just plan them images. Yeah. 
Thanks, Jesse, for the wonderful comments. Yeah. Um, but again, Ed, Ed would love to hear, and we would love to hear from, from at least few of you. Okay. Or we go back to our colleagues. If you have any questions, Jess, do you have anything? Sorry to put you also in the spotlight, but Jess is busy. Okay, Paswin, do you have any anything, uh, any question for architecture? Um, no questions, but uh, I have worked with Shen before, right, mm -hmm. Shen? And uh, what I appreciate is that uh, you know over a period of like three weeks, it's impossible, yeah, uh, to have a you know, a very in-depth um, urban study, yeah? And uh, students tend to do very broad and mm. rather general and generic analysis. And we see this uh, particularly in the past year when uh, we've been under MCO and students have had to rely on Google Street Maps and, you know, um, the same old photographs basically. So I think what Shen pointed out is that, you know, it doesn't have to be broad, yeah, to be, um, uh, to, to have an effective strategy. But I think it's important to, to think about, like, you know, maybe some specific issues, you know, that you want to resolve over the next 10 weeks, or do we have nine weeks now? Yeah, so um, I think, have some clear idea on just a few issues to resolve and then, you know, go in deeper in getting and, and trying to understand your, you know, the social engagement, the uh, relationship uh, between spaces, between people and spaces, the social spatial logic of things. Yeah. And and the tool that uh, Shen has uh, shared with us is effective because it looks at the three-dimensional um, uh, appreciation. Yeah. So um, I'm 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 just uh, uh, um, sharing from uh, our. We just had a we just had our presentation, Shen, on the um, preliminary analysis. And uh, the past, this is the third semester that we've gone online. Yeah, so I find that, and we just had the Studio 5 presentation as well this morning. So I find that the students' understanding of, uh, of, of the site, both macro and micro, you know, which is a bit sad because they've not been able to walk the street, is very general and very generic. Thanks, Pasu. Yeah. Probably, Shen, do you have any technique on how to go about I, it? No, I think I, I, I agree with uh, architect Fauswin. The, the students usually are given three weeks, and it's true. Uh, you know, it, it, sometimes if doing it for the first time, it could be quite training for the students. However, the way I see this is usually when students go to the site, I'll usually ask them what interests them, you know, Suddenly, there's something. So that seeks your opinion. Now, they could be say that I, I, I enjoy looking at the prostitute on the site. Okay, great. Let's take that as a topic. Or, you know, I want to, they'll say, hey, I'm interested at this, this craft of people uh, who come for this chicken rice shop who is very famous on the street. Okay, let's use that as a starting point to develop the idea to the more, you know, or, or they, they enjoy, you know, having seen the phenomena where you know people double park in in child kids you know um, or there's a lot of buskers playing music and the site and that creates a lot of attractions so usually with that starting point then it develops in-depth analysis on the subject so it kind of answer to to uh, Cindy's questions on, on the chat box she, she say that yes there is uh, there's always negative issues uh, so you can choose to solve it or adapt it because I think architects, they are not world saver, but we are trying to address the issues on the site, right? So I don't think we can cure AIDS or cure, you know, wise activities. You can choose to decide whether you want to 
to to to solve it or adapt it, like, but do it very architecturally. You know, some student might can say that, oh, there's a lot of gambling on the site. So I just designed a police station that will solve the problem. So so while that is being easy, <laughs> um, but I think as an exercise in, in architecture, we are not trying to always look for solutions, uh, but look for ways to rework with the existing uh, populations on the site. So this is where, whether you want to work with them, seeing them as part of the nature of the site, or you want to just cut the roots, which is very easy. So to answer you, uh, Singyi, for me, I would just, uh, I would go for the adaptations because then that allows your project to be interesting to, 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 to go down to the uh, to the to the reason why certain activities happen, why certain negative issues happen, and then you can actually provide architectural so solutions, not money, not financial solutions, but architectural solutions to the matter, right? And then this is where you need to work very closely with your tutors to to share ideas, share solutions, and they will then inform you whether this solution is 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 architectural, you know. So, so hopefully, uh, Sini, that, that helps to, you know, share a bit from what I share and what uh, architect Fazuin share. Yes, it's complex. Yes, it's uh, three weeks. But start with something simple. It doesn't have to be very complex. Start with your interests and develop into a topic, develop into a keywords, then you find more in-depth into it. Thank you. So, yeah, that's clear for me. Thanks. I also want to address uh, Ogola's questions, Favo Ogola. Um, uh, she has a question, since subversion is a kind of transformation into a new type. So what are the ways that, that still can be contextual while still creating these new types? It's, it's a very complex question, but let me just uh, break it down. Yes, subversion is, is one of the way to, to to look into the problems and look into the issues and maybe some um, interesting new ways that could subvert the traditional way. So this is what I, I mean by that, uh, Fabo. So if, if I could show you one example. Um, now, this is basically a subversion of the traditional skyscraper type. So, this is what it means that you know the traditional types of skyscrapers are usually pre-planned and generally very expensive to, to just cast in one shot because they, they are not, and it takes years, say three years or five years to complete the building. So then they are not very adaptive to the economical situations like now, you know, or the, the, the occupancies requirement in this season. So these students then look into a subversion of the types of subversions of a skyscraper types to then start to break the building from starting with small capitals then develop into, into this. So they are contextual because they understand that, uh, you know, some time ago, this, uh, this um, Lee Kong Yu has, has then has hang a vision and then how is this vision being more adaptable rather than becoming a political stress and financial stress to the country. So that was the political contextual that this student was looking into. And this, the type that was developed is into a growing adaptable types, as you see here. Right, so, so far, well, this is what I mean by subversions of the types. And subversions also allows, you know, students to understand the different type of skyscrapers and eventually develop into one that can be accommodative to the different seasons. Um, yeah, is that does that is that does that help to? Yeah, yeah I think it um, makes it clearer. Thank okay, you. thanks. But again, this if this is something new to you, work very closely with your tutors. Do not subvert your tutors. That's what I'm trying to say. You subvert <laughs> your project, but don't don't go and say, oh, you know, I want to. I'm a smart kid. I don't want to listen to you." Um, not at the moment, I, I mean, because everyone here has only completed two and a half years of educations. Um, those ambitions usually not ended up very well, uh, based on my observations. 
They're, they're smart young adult. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully not too <laughs> quite cool. Uh, you, know. Um, you know, because in the end of the day, the tutors are here to help you. You know, they are not, there's no competitions. Uh, uh, there's no best tutors award that, that you know. So, so the tutors are always here to support you. Uh, so work very closely with your tutors. And of course, you, 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 you're, you, know, you, you attend university to learn. So this is what you're learning. Uh. Jen, I think we have one more uh, one question from Aisha. Yeah. Okay, um, Aisha mentioned so for integrations, could you give us another samples based on how it can be applied to our projects? Um, okay, again, these are these are samples uh, to give you inspirations of what you could be doing. Um, now, for example, so integrations. This project is an integrations. They look into connecting different neighborhoods because perhaps due to certain developments of maybe train tracks that were previously developed, a lot breaking the, the, the two communities together. So what buildings, you know, the, the typical building is then developed as this, which is one block, maybe a big train station or, you know, so that was breaking the two neighborhoods together, you know. So, so eventually these students use an existing site, a maybe successful space, they will see as, as a potential to integrate the, the different neighborhood together. And this is by understanding how this two neighborhood works, maybe through marketplaces and how this marketplace you know, can, can work together. So some of you could work with, you know, in, in, in the downtown KL, there's an um, Indian town, Indian small town, and there's a Chinatown. So if you say that, hey, how is this Chinatown, Indian town gonna work together? Because they are very differently. The function is very differently. The festival is very different. So how do they be integrated? So this is where students ask interesting questions and find interesting solutions to the, to the matter. Um, there's another example here. Um, uh, well, for example, here, the, the students intend to create a connections between the outside and the inside integrations. So, as you see, most of the skyscrapers are very dull, very non-responsive to the inside and the outsides, uh, very much segregated. So the students then come up with an idea that the facade becomes a mediator from the outside and the insides. And of course, this is through programs, but also a facade that then allows these interactions to occur, these interactions are you know, with, with this sociable interactions that allows integrations of different communities that, that have to work together. So he has to understand how different society works and how what makes them attractive, what then makes them integrated together. For example. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks, Shen. I think thanks, one, sir. one question from Okay, Mas. Um, Mas, Mas Khan. Do you think it's very contrasting architecture form in the heritage context respond to the context or they're meant to highlight or ignore? Okay, that's fine. I, so it, it's, it's a good question um, because I think you're trying to understand what is the right thing to do, right, uh, Mas? So whether you want to create something very contrast or something that's very integrative. Now then I would have to refer to your intentions and what you're trying to do what what's the intentions of your what's your brief la? so if your project is trying to say that i disregard the heritage i want to create something and then how does bilbao works successfully and how do i really learn from it how what's the successful factor so your focus of studies is then looking into how bilbao has been successful but again you have to work very closely with your tutors again because I am aware that you know, some students might be perceived as ignorant or stubborn to say, oh, I just want to do Bill Bow, I don't care. But there are ways to do it. You know, it's not just ignore. You know, how could you even take on to elements of heritage and make it a modernized heritage? While still, so, so there is a certain relation, not just a copy and paste building, right? So, so there is a certain depth and, and, and substance in the building rather than just something very strange and alien to the site. So you can also integrate, but also modernizing and heritage. Now that makes the project much more meaningful and, and integrative, you know, 
Um, say for example, you cannot put um, a bill bow in, in tailors, you know, that first of all, that will affect a lot of things. Your school fee will go up, you know, they you have a lot of guests coming to the to the school. So is that something relevant to the school, to the campus of Taylor? So this is where the, the tutors would help you to open up perspective that you never expect. So it's easy to say that, oh, I just want to build bow effects. Um, this is usually allowed if your studio one is to do two, which is then trying to train you to be more expressive, to do drawings. But I think studio six and beyond would require you to be more critical towards your work and your work to have more depth rather than just a project by itself. Right, Mas, hopefully you, you, you understand this a little bit and why your tutors has to maybe discuss with you on, on certain topics. Uh, contrasting is fine. The question is how you do it. It's not so much of what you're going to do, it's how re related and how it works. That's more important. So to answer the how is then through your design. Mm, all right, thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Mas, for the uh, interesting questions. Yeah, very interesting question from the group. Uh, one, one question from Pang Shuen. Yeah. Shen. Okay, um, okay. Pang Shuen was asking, due to the pandemic, online analysis are conducted. So what should architect do if the design is not appreciated by the communities? Well, and then how can we find a balance of designing a place more towards the community needs and what they what we want to do? What we want them to do. Okay, so this is where the keyword relevance comes into place. Lah, because once you determine who you are designing for, you, are you designing for the buskers? Are you designing for the land, you know, the, the, the uh, property owners or homeless? So once you have firm up who you want to focus on, what community you want to address, you know, a, bit, a bit similar to what I'm trying to share here. You know, are you trying to make the client very happy or make the purchases or the communities and who, which community are you addressing? So then if, if the, so, so then they would then appreciate it because it's relevant to them. So this is where this context, the studies of context is very important to, to drive, to understand the needs and how you strategize um, here, a decision, a brief, what strategies and, and the design that comes after. Um, a balance of designing a place more towards the community needs and what they need to do. The balance is supposed subject to the topic you have selected for yourself. So if I'm trying to say that I'm trying to solve hunger on the side, I don't want homelessness. So, but you can't just design a a charity center, that's not architectural. But you can say that how they can integrate with the existing neighborhood of job opportunities. So that allows them as opportunity to, 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 to gain a skill and eventually take care of themselves. You know, or a center that integrates certain interests, people of different interests, and by interacting with them, they they tend to raise awareness to the to the neglected group. So the balance that you seek here is subject to the topic you have, you have selected with your tutors and how you cook the, the ideas. So, so, so the balance, I, I suppose, is then rely on, on how relevant your suggestions, your, your design, your design related to the, this, related to this, how. Right, so if you can address this very well, then your project is relevant and is balanced. But you need to be firm, you need to be sure, verdict, who are you addressing? Right, so um, Ping Xuan, I think this is where it helps you to understand what you, you could do to, to seek a balance or, or be sure what you're doing is right. Huh? Okay. Now, you, yeah, take the pandemic online and since I contacted. Yes, yes, you're right. You're limited by your capability to go to the site. So then I would have to rely on the students' interests and their passions to do their to do their work, you know. 
Um, and there's many ways to skin a cat, you know, and there's many ways to, to do a task. So there are people who actually camp there. I have students who used to camp there. I think we, we kind of enjoy the students taking turns to take videos as a group. Now, there are groups who just do their studies online. Up to you, but it's, it's then how you come up with your analysis. Lah. But of course, if you can be on the site, the quality, the in-depth of your studies are much stronger, much more interesting. And that is different from your friends, peers who are just doing a very superficial uh, research on the sites. Okay, so thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, do we have any final question before it's, it's actually 3 30 now? Uh, we would like to, uh, any question from the group? Uh, probably we'll take one final question uh, either from the, our colleagues uh, from the lecture or from the student. Wicket is still driving, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think uh, no question. Uh, very good questions. I think as a, as a follow-up, if you really want or you're really passionate about uh, your questions, specifically on some like the Bilbao effect uh, or going contrast or complementing with the environment, or the built environment, I think you can, you can further watch. Uh, there's a lot of documentary why buildings are built that way or what, why buildings are designed that way. Even the Garys, the Saha did. Uh, so if you find it relevant to what you're doing or your intention or probably your narrative, then go for it. If not, then you have to go back to other means. Okay. So again, it depends. As architecture we mentioned, it depends on how you justify it, justify everything that you want you will be doing uh, later on. Okay, uh, I think with that we end our session for today. A very good Maybe. session with our yes, Chen, Maybe I have a question. Yeah. The students are since there's no questions to me. Yeah. How do you know your project is relevant? Okay, good question. I think this is more to Mas because he's doing build out effects, so that could be quite quite uh, risky, mm -hmm. possible, but risky. But how do you know your project is relevant? Maybe this is a food for thought for, for the students, or even you can ask your tutors um, or other tutors as well, or even your past tutors. Is my project relevant? Right, so maybe I think the answers I'll let the students look for themselves. It's even relevant after you graduate. Is my project relevant, right? So, um, food for thought. Thanks, Prince. That's good. Thanks, Shen. Uh, I know you're quite busy. So th thank you for gracing our, our event for today, the ADP Lecture Series 2. Okay, again, on behalf of the school, the, my co-lecturers and the students, we would like to thank you for your time. Okay, and thank we you, hope Chen. to see you. Yeah, we hope to see you in the future uh, events, such as the review. Looking forward to see you in the final review. Okay, with that, we end our session for today. Uh, we will be excusing architect Shanfei Okay, uh, okay, for today, I know he's still busy with his work. Okay, thanks, Shen. Bye, Shen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Q, for the thank invitations you. and the sharing. Good to see everyone. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Cheers. Thank you. Stay safe, Shen. Thank you. Cheers. I will share the slides with Prince and, and hopefully that get to share as well. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you also to Ms. Tay for inviting our guest speaker for today. Okay, we will be pausing for a while. I know you had, uh, you're quite tired, uh, probably before we continue with the other parts. So probably we can, we can have a five minute break, a toilet break. Okay, then we'll come back at exactly 3.40. Okay, thanks everyone. See you at 3.40.